All right, guys, so today I'm back at Olean's with the Street Glide. We're going to be doing an install on my bike. You guessed it. We're going to be changing out the front cartridge kit. And the second thing, you remember, guys, I asked you if, if you guys thought I should put chrome or black on the front of my motorcycle. Well, you have to stick around and watch. I want to show you how to install the Olean's cartridge kit and give you a basic overview of it. Guys, let's get into the video. All right. going on joey hey what's up Tom? It's good to see you again man. good to see you man what are we going to do to the bike today today we're going to take the front forks off and we are going to install our fks 228 cartridge kit um it's known as a nix cartridge kit meaning if you had both forks in your hand they would look identical but the right side does rebound and the left side does compression they are both fully preload adjustable um, but we're going to do the install, show you the details, what it takes to do that install. Yeah, you should definitely make a big difference in uh, what you got on there for now, for sure. If you remember last time I was here with Joey, we did the back, the Olean's. HD 159. HD 159's yep. on the back here. And uh, it made a huge difference on the motorcycle. The back was so good. When he put this on here, it actually took a lot of flex out of it when I'm going around the corners. The bike used to kind of wobble like that. Putting these on the back stopped all that so i'm really looking forward to having the matching set fixing the rear makes a big difference but then when you fix the front it it balances the bike yeah, out yeah. a balanced bike is a happy bike and yeah. you'll feel that in the handling for sure i'm gonna get out of your way yeah sure we'll take the front forks off just give me a little bit of time to do that and then okay. we'll uh bring them over to the workbench and do the install all right sounds good cool All right, Tall, this is what's going to be needed to do a front cartridge kit install on your bagger. This is what's known as the FKS228. Uh -huh. um, you'll need the cartridge kit. You'll need the springs, two liters of our 1309 oil. This is what we'll use in pretty much all of our front end suspension products. And then you'll also need two tools, uh, the pull-up tool and the spring lock plate. Okay. Um, all of these items are sold separately, but this is everything that's needed to do the install. So basically, let's take a look. Here's your springs. They both come individually wrapped. Next thing is going to be the cartridge kit. So in this box, there will be the two individual cartridge kits. Inside will come your owner's manual and mounting instructions. I highly recommend that you take the mounting instructions out and fully read how to do the installation before you even get started, just to give you a good idea of what's involved. And then you have your two cartridges. Mm -hmm. Here's one. The only difference is, is one is in control of rebound and one is in control of compression. They both are preload adjustable. And the way you're able to tell is on the top, it'll say rebound or compression. And generally we usually, we always put the rebound on the right side and the compression on the left side. Okay guys, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start disassembling the stock fork, take out the OEM internals which will then allow us to install the FKS228. So the first thing we're going to want to do is take the stock preload cap off. Now there's a warning here, there is a ton of preload on the stock spring. So the second this thing comes undone, it's going to want to shoot up in the air. It takes a 19 mil Allen. So what I like to do is I'm going to grab it. I like to first get it broke loose. So I'll give it a good, see how it's starting to spin. Now, I'm gonna put this rag on top of it because like I said, there's a ton of preload on this stock cap. <laughs> there we go. Now uh, we got the top cap off. Put this to the side, we will not use that again. Stock preload tube, will not use again. Washer here, will not use. The OEM spring, you know, what's probably the best thing for me to do, let me see if I can pull this out and not make a mess. There we go. Very useful to have some rags readily available for you. Won't use that again. Now that the uh, spring is out, I like to keep this compressed all the way down and I'm gonna pour the old oil out. 
pretty much it's all out. That, that really stinks. Yeah, it smells really good, doesn't it? <laughs> and it looks as good as it smells. Looks really bad. <laughs> all right, now with the oil drain, there is a 12 mil Allen here at the bottom that we're gonna need to break that loose. And I also like to use the impact on that as well. Okay, we're gonna take out the uh, 12 mil Allen. And basically what this is gonna do is unlock the internals, the stock internals from inside. So let's give this a hit. Now sometimes the Allen will come loose from the, the unit inside, but then the unit inside starts spinning and the Allen is spinning and it doesn't want to come all the way undone. Little trick from the guys in the back. Basically took a broomstick, uh -huh. pulled that all the way down in there. There it comes. You'll start to see the oil here in a second. Oh, right man. There. So one thing that's very important uh, to all is when you take out this bottom Allen mm -hmm. that holds the internals inside, there's a crush washer, you know, is inside there as well, that you want to make sure, that, I mean, I recommend you replace. If not, just make sure that when you're putting the cartridge kit back in, mm -hmm. that that crush washer is there because that's what's stealing that Allen and holding the, uh, the oil inside. Now we're taking out the stock internals. which the only thing we're gonna to wanna to keep from this is this top out spring right here, the stock OEM top out spring. You will be reusing this guy right here. And it's a top out spring, is that keep it from bottoming out? Or is that no. What? Okay, so the purpose of a top out spring is, you know when you're wheeling this bike all over the place, <laughs> front end, looking at the air, um, when you wheelie or unweight the front, it's gonna naturally want to return. Right. Um, pretty fast because you got two springs working in the opposite direction. So when it does that, we call it like an anti-spring. It softens the blow when it wants to fully extend. Oh, okay. When it fully wants to top out. So that's what a top out spring does. Oh, gotcha. All right. And we will be reusing that one in, in your new uh, FKS228 install. That's basically it. Now what we're gonna wanna do is okay. use a good solvent to clean out the old oil and make sure everything uh, feels good and um, once that's done, then we're going to start uh, doing our install of the new cartridge kit. All right, Tall. Okay. Um, very simple. You're basically going to have your oil, of course, your main cartridge kit, all right, your main spring. You're going to have two choices of preload collars, okay? And it will tell you in the back here on the last page of the mounting instructions mm -hmm. whether you have a fared model or a bike without a fairing, you know, like a, a Road King versus right. a, um, an Ultra, okay? And then that's going to tell you which preload collar to use. So that's very important. You have a tall one and a short one. So do not miss that step. Your OEM Allen with crush washer, OEM top out spring. And then there's an O-ring that we provide that goes on our fork. So this is going to be our rebound cartridge. And the way you can tell that is either A, by it saying rebound on the top, or also another way is Holes on the bottom signifies that's the rebound cartridge as well. Okay, what we're gonna do is take the stock Allen bolt. Uh, I like to use a little 243. It doesn't say any owner's manual, but it's a little, you know, insurance. Let's do a little dot. A little dab will do ya. And then go ahead. Basically what this is doing, this is locking our cartridge kit inside of the OEM fork. Torque us the 40 Newton meters. Okay, Tal, what we're going to do next is take our 1309 oil and pour it in. we got Mike Hensley over here. He's going to give us a little tutorial about our oil as while I'm doing this. One of my responsibilities is when we're having a training course for dealers to come in to become a service center, their goal is to train them how to properly take our part, uh, products apart, uh, look for troubleshooting, anything that's wrong, change wear parts. Uh, and one of the things that we cover in depth is quality of the oil and how not to change oil. We develop our oil from ground up. Mm. Uh, it's developed from crude oil. The engineers that's developing the oil are working hand in glove with the engineers that's designing the pistons and determining what the valving is going to be. When we are trying to diagnose something in the field, one of the first 
questions that we're going to ask is, um, you know, what oil did you put in it? Did you run the oil that we recommended? Let me show them the bottle. It says it right here, oil in suspension fluid. Check that out, guys. So you'll know what you're looking for. But I, I say it's available on the website, right? Of course. It is. While you guys are talking, <laughs> I'm sitting here bleeding the cartridge. Okay. This is so important, and I see a lot of people miss this step, and it will lead to an improper air gap. So what I was doing is I filled basically oil up to here, started moving the main damper rod up and down, and it felt very loose. That means there's a ton of air in the system. And after my, just stroking about four or five times, I could see the oil was disappeared. So then I poured more oil into about that same point again, mm -hmm. and I started bleeding the damper rod again. This is very critical. Basically what you're doing is you're forcing all the air out of the system and replacing that air with oil, okay? Oh, okay. So now, you could feel it, like you won't feel anything really on the pull up because this is a compression side, but when you push down, feel it. It's a very nice fluid movement. Movement. Feel that? Mm -hmm. The resistance as you're pushing it down? Yeah. So this is the compression side and that's what you're feeling. You're feeling the compression damping as you're bleeding the, the system. Now, I don't feel any inconsistency. It feels very um, uh, fluid-like as I'm pressing down. So. This, this cartridge is bled. Now what I need to do is set the air gap, okay? The air gap is basically determining how much oil you're putting in there. That air gap acts as a secondary spring that, um, that can help tune your suspension. Air gap in the owner's manual or, or installation manual mm -hmm. is 140 millimeters, okay? And what that means is, with the inner tube pushed all the way down into the lower tube, mm -hmm. I'll take our special air gap tool. I mean, you can use anything. You can use a syringe, um, just something to have a way to suck the oil out, but I've already pre-measured this to be 140 millimeters, that right. gap, okay? So what I'm gonna do, put that in there. That put me right at 140 millimeter air gap. Pretty cool. easy. So see there, now that air gap is 140 millimeters. Now we can go into the next step of installing the spring, okay. and then after that the cap. Okay, after the cartridge kit is bled, what we're gonna do next is we're going to install our pull-up tool. It's very simple. I'm gonna run that nut up to the bottom of the pull-up tool. Now I'm gonna take our spring we usually like to put the part number of the spring facing up. Just something we do here. Okay. No big deal, it's not gonna make anything right or wrong. So that is now on. We're gonna take this plastic spacer. Um, there is a large side diameter and a smaller side diameter. Large side is gonna go on top of the spring just like that. And we are gonna take our preload tube. Mm -hmm. For your scenario, we're using the 12 millimeter preload tube. Install that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pull up our damper rod, put that in between the preload tube and that nut. So then I'm going to screw that nut all the way down until it stops. It's a 13 mil, by the way. Okay, we're down at the bottom of the threads. I'm gonna take this guy off. No longer need that. I'm gonna take our fork cap. There you go. Thank you. I'm going to install the O-ring that we provide onto the fork cap. Put a little bit of our grease that also can be purchased at the time of checkout. Just a little bit on the threads. And now I'm going to screw this cap on until it stops like so, and now I take that 13 millimeter till it touches the cap. Just take a pair of soft jaws, grabbing the outside of the fork cap, give it a little snug, that's it. You're not trying to, you know, tighten the heck out of it. And once that's done, pull down on the spring a little bit, pull that out, line it up, get to go. Now, this is a little tricky. You just gotta put some weight into it. Make 
sure. That's it. All right. That is one cartridge kit installed. Also, I'd like to hit a little bit of brake clean on the shaft over, up on the top where it's going into the uh, triple tree. Just to make sure, you know, you don't have a, you want a nice clean surface when you're installing it back into the triple tree. Yeah, she's good to go. Now we're gonna repeat the same thing for the rebound side. Follow the same exact steps and um, button her back up. All right, Tall, one thing uh, I want to check before I install the forks is where the rebound and compression settings are at. Because it's obviously way easier to get to them while they're off the bike than when they're on the bike. The same place that I check for the correct preload collar to use, um, there's a thing called setup data. It's going to say where your rebound and compression should be. Compression is at 12 clicks, rebound is at 12 clicks. Okay, well, how do I know what 12 clicks is? You've got to have a starting point. What we do is we take our three millimeter Allen, I close it clockwise until it stops. That's considered zero. Mm -hmm. Once it stops, I'm at zero, and I'm gonna count back counterclockwise 12. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna wanna do the same thing for the, um, let's see, this was the rebound side, and we wanna do the same thing for the compression side. So this is the rebound side. That's the compression side. Mm -hmm. But when I had the stock, both of them were identical. Yes, both, both of the OEM forks acted. Uh, they both had rebound and compression valving on each leg. Okay, so why does O-Lanes do it one side to the other? It's actually uh, something we developed in road racing. Um, easeability for tuning. In the OEM style, since they're together, Rebound will always affect compression and compression will always affect rebound. It's hard to tune one without affecting the other. When you have them in two separate legs, you could give it a bunch of rebound and it wouldn't do anything to the compression side or vice versa. It totally separates the two functions. Okay. Which for tunability is a great feature. I mean, really, there's basically three parts to a shock or forks or so forth. You've got your spring, which controls the geometry of the motorcycle based on how much weight is on there, correct? Mm -hmm. um, and then you got your valving, which you got your rebound valving and compression valving. Compression controls how quick or how slow the forks compress, right. okay? Rebound controls how quick or how slow it returns back. So naturally you want them to work hand in hand um, to give you the best possible ride. So what am I going to fill with my new Nix 22 cartridge? You'll notice that a lot of the OEMs, uh, especially in 2013 and older, mm -hmm. it seemed like that the bike had a lot of dive. Like if you were to shut the throttle off and get on the brakes, that there was a lot of transfer of energy, movement toward the front. Right. Um, and it caused this pogoing feel. So by upgrading to good suspension components internally, it controls that first initial movement and it also controls back to leveling. Or if you hit a big pothole, like or a you know a strong edge that you're getting ready to go over top of a bridge, that is a strong force that's going into the forks, right? So the damping at that point, it's the pistons and the design of the valving that will control that movement, get the tire back to the ground, and make it to where you didn't feel it. You know that is our goal: um, is to make sure to try to take the imperfections out of the road and keep the tires in contact with the pavement. So it's all finished, huh? Man, you're good to go. All right, man. I can't wait to ride it. Unfortunately, it's, it's raining outside today, but you know when I go home, I'm going to hit Foothill Parkway or some kind of back road and give it a try. It's going to change the personality of the bike. So um, the feedback, uh, hopefully it's going to cut down the vibration on the handlebars. It'll have better response when you're braking, turning into corners. Um, it all should be improved. Okay, well, I look forward to riding it, putting some miles on it. And uh, you guys, I'll be giving you some feedback and let you know what I think about it. Right on, dude. Thank you. All right, thank you. All good. All right. All right guys, if I sound muffled, it's because I have all this cold weather gear out. It's only 36 degrees outside, but I wanted to try out my new suspension. I just wanted to try it out and give you guys a little taste of what's to come. But man, I'm so excited about this. It feels great. Uh, I knew when they did the rear of the bike that it was gonna be a huge improvement, but the front 
Some people said you won't notice it that much. I don't know what they were talking about. Man, this feels awesome. Feels like a whole nother bike. Whole different bike. There's no more front end dive. It just feels planted to the ground now in the front. Now it's wet back here, so I'm not really going to give it all I got like I normally would coming through here. But man, this feels good. <laughs> it changed the way the bike feels. I, I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, it's not dipping in the front end anymore when I hit on the brakes. So I can't wait to get this thing out on the Foothills Parkway or even back to the Dragon to give it a try. But it feels great. It does. It feels like a totally different motorcycle. Yeah, this is awesome. I can't ex explain how it just makes you feel more planet in the turns when you're going in and you got the front end when you hit the brakes it's not dipping on you like that it makes a world of difference Tracks. Let's see. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Going over those railroad tracks was insane. Here's a bump. Here's a big bump. Let's try this. Oh my goodness. It makes a world of difference. Yeah, man. I don't know why people said that. It didn't make that it, you know, you get the most gain out of the rear. That may be true, but. I didn't, I guess it was me, I probably, I just didn't expect to get this much out of the front as I did, but man, this feels good. Definitely feels more planted to the ground. Let's try it on the interstate now. Interstate's backed up a little bit. Was my suspension trash? I mean, I know it was a stock suspension and people yeah, do the upgrades for a reason. Oh yeah, that definitely soaks up that bump a whole lot better. And it makes sense, being in the front, here we go, yeah, being in the front, I mean that's the first thing that's going to hit the pothole or whatever. It's nice on the interstate, but I was really impressed on the curvy road and going over the railroad track. Man, my motorcycle is so dirty. You, you notice in the video, I changed the forks out, I decided to go with black. Let me know. Put that in the comments below. Let me know what you think. I like it. I like it a lot. I would like chrome too. But something about the black, I just like better. And there's a pretty nasty bump right here getting on this interstate. Right here. Oh yeah, that was different. So we're going to end the video here. Yeah, the whole lean suspension is a huge upgrade. I got the rear, now I got the front. It's really awesome. I shout out to Joey Sabrizi and Mike Hensley. Thank you guys. It's been a great upgrade. Thank you. More videos to come. This is just the tip of it. You haven't seen anything. Uh, hopefully I can get you some really good riding footage soon and give you a full review of the oldest front end. Got some cool videos coming your way, some more installs that I'm actually going to be doing tonight and another one tomorrow. So, guys, I want to thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe. Make sure you go to Olean's.com to get some, uh, check out the suspension upgrades for your motorcycle. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos come up. Again, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day.